so this game is released all the way back in 2001. So it's going to be very important for me not to view this product 100% through today's lens and make sure I appreciate the strides it made for all of gaming when it was released. This is also the first time I've played a Halo game. I'm looking forward to the rest of the series. So as I work through these games, I won't be discussing details that have implications to future games or details that future games flesh out that were just a footnote in Combat Evolved. With that said, the Pillar of Autumn isn't actually moving itself. Many times throughout Combat Evolved, there are limitations in the technology that Bungie had to work around, such as this one. Using the camera, the art of the engines, and our expectations for a ship to, you know, move, simulate its traversal through space. As for tracking us all the way from Reach... I love to see it. Just one throwaway word, and years later, an entire game is dedicated to the happenings on Reach. We made a blind jump. How did they... Get here first? The Covenant ships have always been faster. As for tracking us all the way from Reach, at light speed my maneuvering options were limited. A thing that Combat Evolved succeeds at is its ability to make the world feel much more fleshed out and real by not explaining things to us. When it comes to world building, we aren't having exposition shoved down our throats and just have to accept the ride that we are joining the characters on. Who is the Covenant? What is Reach? Why is Master Chief so strong and such a badass? We'll find out all these in later games, but here Bungie used the minuscule amount of development time they had to make the campaign in the most effective way they could. Making us ask more questions than it answers draws us into the story more. And Cortana. Let's give our old friends a warm welcome. I've already begun. We probably could infer that he was talking to an AI, but it could have been someone else. Giving her a physical body makes her much more personable and relatable, which will be very important to buy in the relationship she shares with Chief. I played through with the anniversary graphics because I like them. But wow, did they really go hard on remastering everything in this game. The effort put into recreating almost everything is astounding and commendable, as playing through on the two graphical settings almost feels like two different experiences, both great in their own right. Am I right, Marines? Sir, yes, sir! Mm -hmm. Damn right I am. Hot damn I love Johnson. He never ceases to make me chuckle. On top of him, the way the Marines are written just feels like the comedic moments of a war film all the time, and I'm 100% here for it. There's a place for dark and depressing, and I think I'll find it later in the franchise for sure, but here we are just space boys getting ready to kill aliens. There he is, the man in the armor that would take over an entire two, three console generations, like you wouldn't believe, and for good reason too. John 117 was the poster child of the renaissance that was about to happen for first person shooters on consoles. Sorry for the quick thaw, Master Chief. Things are a little hectic right now. The disorientation should pass quickly. This is probably Bungie staff talking to each other about the crazy crunch they had to do to get the campaign ready for release. Sir, I'm getting some calibration errors. I'm going to invert your looking pitch so you can see if you like it better that way. Oh, hot damn does this age the heck out of this game, and I love it. I'm young enough that I don't even really remember playing any games that ask this of me. Okay, bring his energy shields online, please. And to keep the revolution of the first-person shooter going, Bungie introduces a diegetic reason on why your health regenerates, which for them was vital to the pace of action for Combat Evolved. Bridge to Cryo 2, this is Captain Key. Send the Master Chief to the bridge immediately. Captain, we'll have to skip the weapons diagnostics and I- On a double, crewman. Aye, aye, sir. Even a game from 2001 understands that a tutorial in this type of environment is the most boring thing to put your players through. When did some devs forget this little trick that Bungie knew so many years prior? So in case you didn't realize how serious this situation is, they murder the nice man who gave us our wake-up call and bring in the Halo signature percussion. Whoa. One, I've always known that the Halo score smacks, but I didn't know it slapped like this. I guess this voice does match up with someone called a Spartan. Captain Keys. And there's that buttery smooth voice. They could have gone the route of the silent protagonist and the armor would have made it work. But to have Steve Downs voice a chief who is a man of few words makes him 100% more badass as a leading man. Good to see you, Master Chief. Things aren't going well. We all know that Master Chief is a badass and pretty much the best of the best, as far as I know. But he's a great lesson in humility and doing what you love versus chasing something for status. I'm sure he could have any rank he wanted throughout his time with the UNSC, but he just stays the rank of Master Chief. It reminds me of when Captain Rex was promoted to Commander Rex, only for political reasons, but everyone still called him Captain, and in his mind, that's where he enjoyed being. Sleep well? No thanks to your driving, yes. So you did miss me. The rapport these two have throughout this game makes me so happy and want to cry for some reason. They have such a cute friendship. We're abandoned in the autumn. That means you too, Cortana. While you do what, go down with the ship? 
That's kind of one of the requirements of being captain, no? If you look closely, you can already see the ring being called Halo, which is strange because Keys only learns of the name later. Uh, think of a defense. Oh, think of a defense. Think of a defense. Um, the campaign was made under massive crunch in just a few months. Eh, feels like an excuse. Um, got it. Keys actually knew the name all along, but thought it was ridiculous and ignored it until the Covenant called it that. Nailed it. With all due respect, sir, this war has enough dead heroes. Okay, I know I said I wasn't going to mention references to future titles, but what I really meant was not going out of my way to spoil the future games for myself to make connections I can comment on when I find them later in those games. But, I know some stuff about Reach through the grapevine, and if it's true, that line is gonna hurt much more when I play it. Are you ready? Yank me. Well, don't mind if I do. Keys, probably. Your architecture isn't much different from the autumn's. Don't get any funny ideas. <laughs> the dryness of Chief makes everything so much better, especially when contrasted with the more lively Cortana. Am I going to fall in love with these two as I go throughout the franchise? And now we are finally getting to play the game. Something about Halo that always jarred me when I was younger was no ADS. But with more context of this game's development, it's brilliant. It's a perfect response to having Combat Evolved move from PC to console. The joystick not being as precise and not wanting to do the golden eye tracking. This was the natural way to go. Pray and pray, baby. <laughs> to continue Combat Evolved's trend of revolution, the jump to console also forced Bungie to only allow Chief two weapons instead of the usual bag of holding of goodies shooters at the time used. This one choice affects so much of the game it's not even funny. And it's all for the better. <laughs> You know, I just want to know what the elites think of the grunts. Because, Jesus Christ, does that have to be a strained relationship? <laughs> but grunts are also my favorite enemy because of how often they make me laugh. And no better way to tutorialize your combat than throwing us in the thick of it. I can't put my finger on it, and this doesn't track for every mission, I promise you. But there is a sort of intuitiveness about traversing the autumn that just works. There's no need to use waypoints to find our way around. I know there are the green doors, but those aren't always apparent. It looks like the Covenant wanted to catch you now. Poor guy. His only mission was probably to catch Chief here, and now he's probably gonna pay for it. And also, this one line really hypes up Chief's reputation among the world. Punch it. Am I gonna win every time Master Chief talks? I just might. We're gonna make it, aren't we, sir? I don't wanna die out here. You had to say something. And because Chief is best man, he doesn't tell a lie. We're coming in too fast. Damn, air brake failure. They blew too early. I think a certain director of a war in the stars took inspiration from this scene. Chief? Chief, can you hear me? At last. Are you all right? Can you move? Chief be like, Another happy landing. The absolute scale of Halo is so mind-blowing to me. Being able to see the entire ring at times is just a sci-fi wet dream. And I don't know what it is with sci-fi and ring-like structures for fake Earths, but you know, whatever. It's cool. The way the sun is behaving is the sole reason that Steve Jobs picked up the game first before Microsoft. He was so impressed that Bungie could render sun flares in real time where Pixar would take hours to do the same thing. Now, here is where people's minds really got blown with Combat Evolved. The sheer size and openness of the level was unprecedented. On top of the openness, having enemies come at you in waves in a way that felt natural and realistic for the dropships. So people were already losing their noggins, and then Bungie did this. Driving around a vehicle in such an open space was, once again, unprecedented. I never truly understood how big Halo was to the gaming scene growing up, as I was a PlayStation show and ignored everything Halo. Boy, was I silly. And the Warthog is got to be the most integral part of Halo to ever exist, as without it, we have no Halo. What happened was, this was originally going to be an RTS. Funny, because we got that later. But Bungie started playing around with this truck they made, and for one reason or another, kept moving the camera in closer and closer, and had so much fun in the Warthog, they completely changed everything they were doing to create Halo. And here you see me stumble upon the graphical change feature that I didn't know existed. Needless to say, I was confused. You can even see the double take I made in the footage. Another super cool feature that 343 did not have to do for us when remastering this title. Side note, 
Now that I've found this feature, you're going to see me playing with it all the time throughout the video. See, when I think of Halo in the context of its release, it reminds me that in order to continue to create media that adds value to our lives and the art form it occupies, there's a responsibility upon the creator to innovate, and innovate in meaningful ways. Not just a graphical update or a few new guns. Of course, not always can innovation come in the form of Gold Knight to this, but just make sure you innovate in such a way that adds value. Think Call of Duty and how stale it was, then the Modern Warfare reboot happened, which I feel had a lot of positive innovation. Repeating successful formulas is safe and will probably work, but do you really want to live in the world where games, films, and movies are just echo chambers? I know many will say that's ironic and hypocritical coming from me, but you can't please everyone. To cap off this win, thank you Halo for the reminder to always strive to be better. Wow, there he is. He's talking about Chief, right? He's got to be talking about Chief. <sighs> coming here was reckless. You two know better than this. Thanks. You gotta be the captain, of course, but still, thanking your buddies. They call it Halo. One moment, sir. Accessing the Covenant Battle Net. Love that we cut the Chief as Cortana talks since, you know, they just throw his helmet. I hear that some people believe that Chief was a woman underneath the armor because of this. I thought they were looking for the bridge of a cruiser that I damaged during the battle above the ring. But they must be looking for Halo's control room. Damn, that score of the Halo theme sliding itself in there as they're talking about what Halo really is. Martin O'Donnell and Michael Salvatore absolutely murdered this score and created one of the most iconic themes ever. Captain! Hunters! Hang on. They don't call him Captain for nothing. This is the first time the Halo theme makes its power of making everything more badass known when playing over this beach assault. And how fitting that Bungie waits to use the song in all its glory on the first level developed. Why did Chief kick this off the diving board? No reason. No reason at all. To defend a lot of the samey level design here, Bungie was under insane crunch on a game that was already revolutionizing the genre. So for what it accomplished, I think we can cut it some slack. Thank you so much, Bungie, for the floor arrows on where to go. With everything looking the same, I got lost so many times. Again, Bungie flexes what they were able to accomplish with us barging in on a giant battlefield with combatants already engaged with tanks and light vehicles. And it still amazes me what Bungie was able to do in 2001, what their most direct competitor, Call of Duty, refused to do for the longest, which are these large-scale battles with different types of vehicles. And turret sequences do not count. Here, we've got full agency to approach the fight however we like. A big thing that I noticed and got confirmed in a dev commentary is that the camera was integral in selling the campaign's cinematics. Bungie was super limited with their animations and were constantly using little tricks to get the most out of them. So they knew they had to make the camera always be dynamic in a scene, and I think it still holds up by today's standards. The captain, we've got to stop the captain. Keys? There's no time. Get out of here, find keys, stop him. Before it's too late! A question you might be wondering is, why is an AI so animated and emotional? And that's because she's not just an AI, but a literal scan of Dr. Halsey's brain, the woman who created the Spartans. So, so we've got all our personality on top of the insane intellect being an AI would grant someone. From the moment we enter the structure, you can hear the score shift immediately, priming us for the scary, creepy reveal of the Flood. And throughout the entire mission, there is a distinct lack of traditional score to really set the atmosphere. Stay back! Stay back! You're not turning me into one of those things! And in case things weren't already weird enough, we've got this guy. Originally, Bungie had planned if we left him alive, we would have heard him shoot himself. I think there's got to be something said for the unapologetic use of Dutch angles throughout the game. If you're gonna use them, commit. Why do we always have to listen to this old stuff, Sarge? Watch your mouth, son! The plan was to license Black and Blue by Rolling Stones, but for one reason or another, they ended up having O'Donnell create an original rock and roll something, as they put it in their commentary. It's most definitely a nod to the music and times during the Vietnam War. I should remind you, Grunts, what we're fighting to protect! Hey, does the Governor want to wipe out this particular part of my history? That's fine by me! Even in the 26th century, we've got the generational gaps. Some things never change. I got a bad feeling about this. 
That Marine was just waiting for a reason to quote Star Wars now that he's doing his own War Stars. Damn it, Jenkins! Fire your weapon! Legend has it that Jenkins still isn't firing his weapon to this day. Originally, the Flood was to attack right away after watching the video, but instead, they went the route of building anticipation, which most likely worked very well at the time this game came out. From what I've heard, this mission scared the hell out of a lot of us. Now it's just a nice point in history to see how far we've come in terms of scary, creepy video game moments. Thief of a Chief. So all my homies hate the library, and for understandable reasons, but its two biggest defenses are the chapter titles that are a bit self-aware, which absolves nothing, but at least takes the sting out of it, and the main one being the repetitive levels of the library and unending onslaught of the flood really paints a picture on how unstoppable these creatures really are. Which means that any organism with sufficient mass and cognitive capability is a potential vector. Is something wrong? No, nothing. Splendid. I can only interpret this as Chief finally getting a moment to reflect and mourn keys. What do you think this beat is for Chief? Is something wrong? No, nothing. Splendid, shall we? And can I just throw in another win for how beautiful the score is? This might be a bold statement, but the narrative at the very least wouldn't be half as impactful if it wasn't for the score. Something I want to mention is how video games were really just the natural step when it comes to storytelling. We've had books, plays, movies, and songs, but something I find so fascinating is our affinity for accepting a far simpler story as long as we're having fun throughout the game. I understand that's the main draw of video games, but even today I've read so many accounts of people touting this story as among their favorites of all the Halos, and maybe it's just that simplicity of saving the universe that gives the game its charm. I know this, if the game story was translated to film or a book with the same depth of character themes and script, people would hate it. And I know this isn't anything new to you, that the interactive nature of video games can be so damn powerful that it can do pretty much all the heavy lifting for a game story, and we won't look back and remember this as a bland save the world plot, but it's something to be cherished. And I know many of you shared this cherished experience with a friend, and that interaction between you two and the game itself is what makes video games so wonderful. Anyway, back to our double portrayal. I've spent the last 12 hours cooped up in here watching you toady about, he's your pal, is he your chum? Sod off! So if you're wondering why someone with an American accent is saying all these traditionally British terms, it's because Cortana was meant to have a British accent at the start of things. There were some communication issues, and they had already recorded this dialogue with an American accent. And when brought up about re-recording, the response was, and I quote, Jen, go fuck yourself. We're not re-recording. So, in essence, much of what Halo became was through necessity and not entirely up to Bungie because of the insane crunch to make this campaign. And hey, it all worked out, didn't it? Sometimes the best art isn't something that's labored over and revised hundreds of times. A construct in the core? That is absolutely unacceptable. <laughs> that delivery was so on point. Also, irony. You sure that's a good idea? My favorite detail about Spark is that whomever created him added a sigh feature to his robotic voice. He doesn't need to breathe. How, how dare you? Oh. Do what? I have the index. You can just float and sputter. And how fun that these robotic AIs are yelling at each other as if they had the brain and hearts to properly emote their distress and anger. Okay, so I just saw something about Spark being like Cortana, basically a human consciousness uploaded onto some hardware. So that explains their emotionality and human size and all that. But still, keeping the winds. Is it true? More or less. Technically, this installation's pulse has a maximum effective radius of 25,000 light years. But once the others follow suit, this galaxy will be quite devoid of life, or at least any life with sufficient biomass to sustain the flood. But you already knew that. I mean, how couldn't you? Well, I mean, Spark only lied through omission, so like, it could have been worse. Or there's Betrayal 1 at least. Give your construct to me, or I will be forced to take her from you. That's not going to happen. I think we can all aspire to have the badassness of Chief. Also, Betrayal number two. So be it. Save his head. Why does Spark want to keep his head? Am I going to learn later that Spark is insane and collected heads governor style? Ah, smart for saving time. You're using an entire level before, but having most of the level center around the upper areas that weren't concerned with before, so at least it feels a little fresh. I've adjusted your shield system so that it will deliver an EMP burst to disrupt the generator, but you'll need to walk into the beam to trigger it. So I guess there was a whole other level cut, but to save time, their solution was just walk into it. <laughs> Whatever works, you know. 
I wouldn't have known this was a quick fix for a time issue unless I did my research. There's a teleportation grid that runs throughout Halo. That's how the monitor moves about so quickly. I learned how to tap into the grid when I was in the control center. Unfortunately, each jump requires a rather consequential expenditure of energy. I know I've been talking about the crunch this game was under a lot. But a funny anecdote is all that was written for Cortana the day Natasha Mikelon? Mikelon? Mikelon. Mikelhone. You guys can help me with that in the comments. I know you will. Walked into the studio. Of course, script changes are made daily all the time, but talk about building the tracks right in front of the train. Mackelhone. <laughs> okay, uh, I guess it's Mackelhone. I guess I could have looked that up first before trying to read it. Oh well, I know how to say it now, so you guys can't get mad at me. Needless to say, I think we should only try this once. Do it. Ha ha. Oh, I see. The coordinate data needs to be... Right. Sorry. These two are so cute. Oh, poor keys. But a great way to show how much worse the Flood could get. And something interesting is that the Flood Twist swaps the antagonist from the Covenant to them. I like this because it opens up the doors for the humans in the Covenant to team up against the Flood because we all want to survive in the end. You know what he'd expect... What he'd want us to do. <laughs> Chief straight up has no chill and turns keys into Blackguard. Fun fact, this was the absolute easiest cutscene for them to do. It all ends where it started. Bookends. We're not gonna make it! We'll make it. <laughs> I can't wait to see Chief in other games. His dry delivery makes everything better. And again, the usage of the Autumn was another smart reuse of assets. Much less egregious as two betrayals, since it feels more pertinent to the story. And I will endeavor to make your death relatively famous and- At least I still have control over the comm channels. Where is he? I'm detecting taps throughout the ship. Sentinels, most likely. As for the monitor, he's in engineering. He must be trying to take the core offline. Even if I could get the countdown restarted, I don't know what to do. How much firepower would you need to crack one of the engine's shields? Not much. A well-placed grenade, perhaps, but why? Blow things up and all else fails. A solid strategy that works all the time. Okay, I'm coming with you. Ha! Love it. A quick canon explanation for those who run it co-op on why there are two Spartans. Why did I read it like that? Moving on. How fun that the Pillar of Autumn has a racetrack put into it. And it isn't a space war game without some sort of trench run, right? I feel really silly for taking so long to hop on the Halo franchise. Seriously, if the games only get better from here, I cannot wait to do the others for you guys. This game is 20 years old and still a blast to play through. I guess I was a casualty of the lame old console wars back in the day. By choosing PlayStation, I missed out on all these games had to offer, but I'm somewhat appreciative of that fact, as now I get to play through them blind with the perspective of an adult than just a kid shooting things because Kill Alien, equal fun. Which it is, but analyzing and learning about the creation process is so rewarding to me now, where young me would have been bored by it. I guess what I'm saying is I have a much greater appreciation for the artistry behind video games, and I like going into these blind now instead of having my expectations tempered from when I was younger. Just in case the stakes weren't high enough for the ending, they murder Fohammer. So that's why they didn't use the theme for the first leg. We gotta save the best of the score for last. A little jump fake out. I literally thought I messed something up when I first did this. This is such a great culmination to such a fun game. The whole time it's just a high octane shooter that doesn't have to take itself so seriously. And then we get this awesome ending with this interactive set piece. I'm not even joking when I say the gameplay and story hold up even by modern day standards. And not just hold up, but exceed many bland, boring titles that have come out in recent years. You guys remember Homefront? Sure. I'm very biased to this game as its very position of revolutionizing the FPS genre makes it special, but come on. No one's perfect. Move! We need to get aboard now! And to keep the badassery of this moment going, we've got to do the 100 meter dash. For those who might have missed this detail, the Flood showed up at the Pillar to try and get it operational again to invade other star systems, which explains why Spark was there to try and stop them, as he didn't have the Index, and this was the next best step to stop the Flood. 
It also highlights the intelligence the Flood might possess, which just makes them even scarier. This remaster is almost perfect, but something the OG version has over it is that this explosion makes no sound in it. There's no sound in space, y'all. To think how fast that piece of Halo must have been moving to cross the distance is crazy. And that explosion was derived from human creation. Uh, sounds about right. It's finished. No. I think we're just getting started. Sequels, 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 sequels. And that is a good thing. You might be wondering, where the hell is the conclusion? Well, believe me when I say the conclusion is still there. Instead of it being a prattle for five to ten minutes at the end of the video, I've cut up the most important parts of it and dispersed it throughout the main wins section. I've done this for multiple reasons, but the main few are to help simplify the workflow from your editor Sean, to focus up the conclusion script as it can get a little rambly at times, and also I want to keep weekly uploads for you as much as I can. And don't worry, the more I get used to this, the better I'll get at retaining the essence of the conclusion. So thank you all for understanding, and remember, drink water, drive the speed limit, and love one another. Pizza.